One of the lectionary texts for this Sunday is Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 49. For this Bible study session, I'm going to read through verse 35. And behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things which had taken place. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? And they stood still, looking sad. One of them, named Cleopas, answered and said to him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, The things about Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word in the sight of God and all the people, how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to the sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. But also some women among us amazed us when they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just exactly as the women also had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish man, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. And they approached the village where they were going, and he acted as though he were going farther. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it. And breaking it, he began giving it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? And they got up that very hour and returned to Jer Jerusalem and found gathered together the eleven and those who were with them, saying, The Lord has really risen, has appeared to Simon. They began to relate their experiences on the road and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. Like Jesus and the disciples, Cleopas and this unnamed follower of Christ had probably come to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover, never expecting that such events, such horrifying events that would rock their world would happen. To see their friend, their leader, their hoped for Messiah be arrested and crucified. They were processing that still in the grief of having these events take place when they hear these strange news about the women finding the tomb empty and having a vision that tells them that Jesus is alive. They weren't sure what to do with that. And now they were leaving Jerusalem, a place where all these events had taken place. And they were processing that with each other, trying to make sense of things. When suddenly this stranger starts to interact with them, engage them, talk with them, and walk with them on the road. It's interesting that they don't recognize Jesus right away. And how could they? They never would have expected that Jesus would just join them and start walking with them on the road. Even if they could believe the news that Jesus was alive, they never expected to meet him like this on the road. 
Maybe they expected a big sign or for Jesus to come in some glorious and angelic form, but not like this. How many times do we fail to recognize God's presence in our lives, God's activity in our lives? Because God doesn't show up in the way that we expect God to show up. Maybe we expect some big sign or some supernatural encounter and fail to see the ways that God is working and active and present in the ordinary ways. And it isn't until much later that we're able to look back and see that God really was with us, walking with us on the road. As the stranger, Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, walked and talked with them, they began to tell Jesus the story of all the things that had happened and how very disappointed they were, how their expectations had been unmet in, in a most disastrous way, how they had hoped that this Jesus was the Messiah, the true, the one who would come to restore Israel's kingdom, the kingdom of God, and how they had expected that God would act through this Messiah and how terribly wrong things had gone and Jesus had been crucified instead. And everything they told Jesus about this story was true. How they had believed in him as the Messiah and how he had been handed over to be crucified and the strange news they received from the women and how disappointed and sad they were. And then as after Jesus heard their entire story, Jesus then began to retell that story from the perspective of God's full truth. You see, they had expected the Messiah to come and to God, for God's vindication to come by the Messiah overthrowing the political powers of the day, taking his rightful seat as the king of Israel and bringing the kingdom of God to, in this way. And so they believed that because that hadn't happened, Jesus couldn't possibly have been the Messiah. But as Jesus began to retell the story in the light of God's truth, they began to see a new way, a new path that did not match with their expectations, but that was a much broader, much bigger kind of vindication you know, in of bringing about God's kingdom. Not just overthrowing the powers of the day, the political systems of the day, but overcoming death itself and how Jesus' suffering and death had, had allowed for that to happen. They had never expected this, but that is how God had acted in and through Jesus. And as Jesus was retelling that story from this new perspective, their hearts were burning because they recognized the truth of what Jesus was saying. Sometimes we tell ourselves stories about our own lives, about how we expected our lives to be, how we expected that events should have taken place, and how d disappointed we are when our expectations are met. And maybe there's truth in those stories and in the way that we tell these stories. However, as we are able to tell these stories and surrender, surrender them to God, and then hear God retelling our stories in the light of God's full truth. There is healing as we are able to see a new way, a new path, a new way of seeing our own stories in the light of God's much bigger story. I love how it is in the breaking of the bread. When Jesus breaks the bread, blesses it, and gives it to his friends, that he is revealed to them. There's something in the way that he does this act of breaking bread and sharing with his friends 
that opens their eyes to see Jesus, to recognize Jesus. And as they recognize him, they are so filled with joy and they want to be with those other followers of Jesus. They want to tell them about what happened. They want to share their experience, their encounter with Jesus, and they want to be with them. They want to be in community. And it's so telling that after traveling this whole day to this village that we're told is seven miles from Jerusalem, and they're tired, they even tell Jesus before he's revealed to them, it's too late to go anywhere. You might as well stay with us. Once they recognize Jesus and they have that experience um, of faith, they want to be with their friends so much that they don't even stay the night immediately. They just go back. They go back the whole way to Jerusalem just to, to tell them and to be together. That tells me how community is important in the life of faith, how the faith is lived out together in community. And right now we are really feeling that, the importance of community, especially in these days that we are having to be a part in so many ways. We are really craving the ability to be together and recognizing how much community really does matter. But we are also still able to have community through our through the internet, through our services, our Facebook page, texting and calling and checking in with each other, but also through our prayers and through our faith together that we continue to see Christ revealed in our midst through community and to continue to witness to one another of God's presence, even now in these days when we cannot all be together in person in the way that we want to. So I encourage you, dear friend, to think about what stories are you telling yourself? What disappointments are holding you hostage? What expectations have failed to be met in your life? What stories do you need to tell God? Surrender to God and allow God to retell those stories to you. Allow Christ to be revealed to you in new ways through our community of faith, to see your story, your life story in a new context, in context of God's bigger picture, bigger story and truth. And how can we witness to one another of Christ's presence and activity in each other's lives? Let us pray. Faithful God, we give ourselves over to you. Our lives, our stories, our disappointments, our failed expectations. And we pray that you open our eyes to all the ways that you have been present and active in our lives. All the ways that you have walked with us in the past and how you are still walking with us even now. Open our eyes, Lord, to see and understand our stories in new ways, in the light of your full truth and grace. And help us to be witnesses, to witness to each other of your presence and activity in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.